can you explain to me why I've got this urge to hit a tree with this? I believe it's the same urge I'm getting to go Rawr! Has that sort of feel to it, doesn't it? I think it'd scare away more things than Honestly, a shy animal, wouldn't that just scare it away? You'd think so Chris go. Got eaten by a thylacine. Chris and I have come to this bit of wilderness here to have a bit of a look around. It's a place where we've put trail cameras up before. It's where we've seen a couple of footprints, you know, one one area, one over there somewhere. And uh, we just want to have a bit of a feel of the place at night time. Just roam around, have a look at the wildlife that's out there. You know, you can it's all very well look at things that uh, from a camera images, but it's good to be out there and actually experience it. So just kind of getting a feel of the place before we set out some more cameras. This is the area that we investigated those tracks. First in the footprint in the snow video, and then in the thylacine footprint in the mud series of videos. So this is a great spot to do a night investigation to see some of the animals that may not be picked up on our trail cameras. <clears throat> this is a uh, bit of colonial history here, Bill. It's quite interesting. These notches were cut into this tree when it was living so that they could balance a plank, stand on it, and better cut it down. Similar notches were cut by indigenous people so that they could climb the trees and hunt possums, get them out of their nests and drays. So that's a time when thylacines were around and people were actually hunting them, or even before they were hunted. Uh, so, what do you think of that, Chris? Echoes of the past. I think it's uh, pretty interesting and Historically, there was a really famous thylacine sighting here of an adult female being followed by three young. So, uh, absolutely extraordinary history in this area, Bill. Just looking for denning possibilities. Looks like it may have been used by some animals just to rest, but not as a permanent home. Just heard the thumping of a large wallaby going by. It could be a large male paddy melon or possibly even a Bennett's wallaby. That sounded big, whatever it was. Definitely a macropod though. So with the macropods they go. You can sort of hear, hear the jumping pattern. With something like a devil, when you hear it running, it's much quieter and it's much more... It's got sort of a, a, a completely different beat to it. So I guess the thylacine would be more like a devil. You'd think so. A uh, heavier animal, maybe just at full flight, you'd hear it sort of maybe crashing through some of the uh, undergrowth a little bit more, but more that rolling rather than the doof, 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 doof. Well, of a, you, I, ha I have heard people sort of say that uh, thylacines get on their back legs and jump like a kangaroo. Yeah, they had a partially prehensile tail, so I've heard a lot of reports of them sitting up looking around, so... Yeah, but devils do that. Absolutely. Uh, whether they jump like a roo, who knows? But uh, they certainly would have been able to sit up. What is it, Bill? I can hear something here. There's an animal here somewhere, and it's not a squatch. It's oh. just a growling noise. Uh, but it sounded to me like it could have been a possum. For sure. I also heard the. Uh little DJ scratch of a, a ringtail possum before. Yeah. Oh, ringtails is one thing that we didn't get on our cameras. The other one we didn't pick up on our cameras is eastern quolls, so there are animals in this area that we're not picking up on our cameras. That's interesting because eastern quails are quite the little carnivore and oh, yeah. they're relatively common in this area.
So the cameras are not picking up everything. Whether it's just the wrong terrain or the devils are frightening them off, it's hard to tell. Okay, I have noticed uh, here we've got wombat droppings. So this would be uh, nice sort of flat plains on there, typical wombat dropping. This is uh, one of the prey animals for the uh, thylacine. So there's plenty for the thylacine to eat in this area. Yep. Can you smell that, Chris? Yep. It's the scent of a male marsupial. Possum probably. Smells like a yeah. male possum. What do you think? I reckon. It's a strong pungent odour. Yeah, male possums have this really strong odour and it's long it took a while as you sort of see it on their chest yep. just dripping out. It's a good indication that it's brooding season. That might explain why we're uh, not seeing any on the cameras. Okay. They're sort of maybe moving around more transient looking for uh, mate rather than food. Alright, so that's, that's a good point. So as breeding season would change the behaviour on certain marsupials. Absolutely. Makes some easier to see and some hard to see. Devils don't eat for a long time for us. Yeah. Right, let's keep going. There you go, Bennett's droppings. Got those on our trial cams as well. Got a classic wombat burrow just here. We just saw the back end of a wombat disappear, so we certainly know wombats are here. You can uh, smell that classic wombat feces sort of smell too. Should know you've picked enough of it up. <laughs> Bill. Yeah. Come here. It's, um, well, what do you got? It's like a big burnt out big hollow gun. log. Yeah, it's a big tree. What's left of a tree? It's a little hobbit house. It's probably a big myrtle that's been burnt, cut and burnt over time. It's all charred on the inside. So. Yeah, look at inside. Amazing. Lots of little hidey holes here, isn't there? Yeah, that'd be a great little bolt hole. This is a nice dry area up in here. Looks like something sort of scratched that out fairly recently. And uh, if you look down here, here's our culprit, Mr. Wombat. I wonder if uh, they're looking for roots or maybe digging uh, grubs, larvae, out of the dead wood. Certainly I'd seen them do that in this area before. Be a nice big uh, hit of fat and energy in a pretty hostile environment. Outside of this tree that we we're just investigating is interesting. It's not burnt outside in, it's burnt inside out. Do you think somebody's trying to remove it or what? I reckon, or maybe even a fireplace. I mean, there's a broken bottle there. I wonder if someone's lit the mother of all fires in here to keep warm. <laughs> it is bloody cold in this area. It is, it's bloody near zero at the moment. Interesting. Now Chris, we're sort of, we're hearing animals, we smell them, we can see evidence of them, we, uh, we know they're out there. We can just see them at the edge of our spotlights, but our cameras are just not picking up the wallabies and that that we're seeing. I think we should change tactics. It took us quite a while to drive in here. We should drive out with a big spotlight and see what we can see that way. What do you think? You got a big spotlight for us? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go back to your four-wheel drive. Done. So we're going to set up the camera and set up a big spotlight, slowly drive along and use the spotlight to try and highlight animals at a distance. We've tried this technique before, had a couple of other investigation videos and it's always uh, produced results. A lot of the thylacine sightings on record are chance events rather than people sitting in hides for weeks on end so 
Seems a good way to cover a lot of distance very quickly. Paddy Mallet. Tasmanian Paddy Mallet. Yeah. Rufus Wallaby. <coughs> the, uh, the krill of Tasmanian bush, I reckon uh, any predatory animal mainly eats that thing. That's a good description, the krill of the Tasmanian bush. Well, it's sort of the basis of uh, all of the predatory animal food chains. The small tail quail will eat them. It's not much that doesn't eat them. Exactly. All the carnivores do, and quite a few of the omnivores do as well. Saw a lot of wildlife, but unfortunately we weren't so successful at uh, getting that on camera. But what this trip did act as is a very good recce for the next one, for where we can test the scent of the trail cameras and also set up for our next series of videos, which is sound, using sound as an attractive. So stay tuned for that one, guys.